I gave Nola a B plus from last year. I think as long as he can give up less home runs and learn to hold guys on, which he did really well in the postseason, by the way. Like he I think he started doing a slide step that really helped him. And like obviously it's easier to hold guys on when you have JT behind the plate. So even if he can be a little bit faster to the plate throughout the whole season, I think he'll have a lot more success than he had this past year. And I think I think he really just struggled with the time, like the pitch clock. I think that just really destroyed him. And he was leaving a lot of balls right over the middle of the plate, and they were getting hit for home runs like some seemed like every time. So I think as long as he can keep the runners held in place and give up like ten less home runs, he'll be back to the null that we know. I think he has a lot more, a lot more than what he showed us last year. Now I'm with you. Next year's an even year, so hopefully he's <laughs> he's going to be back to his usual even year self, right? That's yep. kind of what I'm hoping for, but. Look, he's going to turn 31 next season. We obviously just signed him to a big extension to pretty much make him a Philly for life. And for good reason. You know, I think he hit the nail on the head, man. The pitch clock, I think, was a huge part of the reason why he was not himself last year. I really, really thought there was something off with him with that through the whole year. I think everyone did. It it was pretty evident that he wasn't comfortable with it. And you could see, like, a lot of guys got comfortable to a point where you knew exactly when on the pitch clock they were going to throw it. For Nola, I felt like, especially with runners on, it was different almost every time. And then once you got to those final two weeks, whatever adjustment they made to get him looking at a different pitch clock, that did wonders for him. And he was lights out from that point on until obviously the last game he pitched in the playoffs was not great, but we wouldn't have been there without him. That's pretty obvious. And he has been so good between the two clinching games the past two years and the regular season to get to the playoff spot and the playoffs as a whole the past few years. He has had maybe two to three bad starts in that whole 10, 11 game span. He's been tremendous. And even if he doesn't have a, like a great bounce back season next year, and let's say he's just under a four ERA, I don't care because I know what he can do in the playoffs. And I know he's going to lock in with that crowd behind him. And I know he can also go on the road without any fear. And he's going to give us a pretty darn good start against any opponent we go up against. So he just has that big game ability. Again, I think the pitch clock, that's really the biggest thing I have to say on him is I think having now adjusted to that, Let's see how a full season goes. And like you said, the home run ball, don't think he'll give up that many home runs next year. Let's hope not. He can't. And uh, yeah, I feel good about where we're at with Nola. I think he's going to be better next year. And I, I gave him I gave him a B, um, mostly just because of his playoff performance. His regular season performance was a little frustrating. So um, that's why I knocked it down a, a slightly below a notch that you did. But we're kind of around the same range there. And I expect him to be back in the A range next year, hopefully. Probably A minus. And yeah, I... I I think that kind of covers our expectations for next year too. I think we're both expecting them to bounce back in a big way. Yep. 200 innings, 230 strikeouts, pretty much every single year. It's like the guarantee. Like if his over or under innings is over two over or under 200, you take the over pretty much every year. Like it's almost guarantee. He never gets hurt. He posts every five days. He's the most reliable or second most reliable behind Garrett Cole in the entire league. The durability is something that I think people don't appreciate enough because there are guys who eat innings. You can go out and be the Cardinals and you can go get a Kyle Gibson or a Lance Lynn. But then there are guys like Aaron Nola who effectively eat innings and actually can yeah. turn in big performances for you. Big difference between those two. And I really think we're going to get that Aaron Nola next year um, that we didn't really see this past year. But again, even this past year, like you said, he threw over 200 innings. Uh, I think he did. Um, I mean, I, I think would... it was like if it was not 200, it was like 190 something. Exactly. It's right around there. So. Nola, Nola, again, it's just, it's so valuable having a guy like that who we know is going to go deep into games. And that's another thing is even if you struggle early in the game to have that mental awareness and mental ability to be like, all right, you know what? I gave up four runs. I gave up five runs, but my team needs me. We need to get through 162 and we need to get through today. I need to still go six, seven innings in this game if I can. Um, and just to lock in there and your offense gives you some run support. There, there's not too many guys who can do that either. So credit to him. I don't really have much else to say on him. I thought Nola uh, was unbelievable in those first couple of playoff starts. And even in the last one, it didn't really matter because he didn't get the run support in that game. The offense was not scoring in game six of the NLCS for whatever the reason. I don't know, but that wasn't going to matter.